the Atari 2600 Paddle Controllers. Back in the late 70s and early 80s, you knew the games you wanted to play, and a good share of them were only made to be played with a paddle. And only a paddle could give you the pinpoint control that was smooth as silk for playing those special analog control titles, such as Breakout, Circus Atari, and G.I. Joe Cobra Strike, among many others. Some of us wanted to play Atari racing games, such as Pole Position with the paddles, but could not because they were joystick-only games. So, that's what we're here for today, to take the controls to the next level on not only games that you enjoy in your Atari 2600, like what I'm showing you right now, but also forward for games on systems of this day and age. A little later on, I'll be converting this steering attachment into a genuine Atari paddle to help in playing classic games of Atari Flashback Volumes 1, 2, and 3 on your PS4 and Xbox One. This will get you playing those analog games the right way. So, as you can see, we have the 3D printed parts for the Xbox One controller. And so you see the steering wheel, the, uh, this is the clamp that goes on the center of the controller and some of the other mechanism parts. And you can tell I've got the uh, steering wheel extraneous plastic removed. Uh, I have to remove some plastic from this. Now let's take a look at the PlayStation 4 DualShock 4. And you can see I have the 3D printed steering wheel. It was ordered, basically already put together. So I only have two parts to deal with. So uh, it's kind of convenient. And let's go ahead and put it on the controller. Very straightforward how to do that. And then we're going to take that little piece that will go onto the uh, thumbstick pad. Actually, just kind of clips on the, the device. And now you've got, you can see how it works. It's got uh, gear teeth that connect. And it works very well. Now you're not going to be driving this way, you're going to use two thumbs to do the driving and your accelerating and braking will be done with index fingers up there on the shoulder buttons or shoulder uh, triggers. Alright, now if we go back to the Xbox One controller, it, this is going to require a little work. So I'll go ahead and get started removing this extraneous plastic and let's zip forward a little bit. Alright, so now let's take this. This is going to be a little bit more of a task because it's got a ton of extraneous plastic to remove. So I'm, I'm going to have to get a tool into, into gear here in just a moment to remove some of it because it, you can tell it's going to require your hands to really push hard and, and get in there and, and snap pieces off and without hopefully, you know, not breaking it. All right, well, this is now what I'm going to have to do is get the tool involved here. So when you're doing it, it feels like you're going to break it, but actually it just kind of conveniently snaps off at the right spots. Uh, just well designed um, to not break the, in the spots you don't want it to break at, fortunately. So yeah, this is going to take a little bit of doing. I'm going to probably not show you the whole process, but uh, yeah, this gives you some idea what you have to deal with. Little teeny pieces of plastic have to be removed and you're probably going to want to get some sandpaper involved in certain areas um, so that you can uh, get it looking pretty nice and smooth. All right, I think we got them looking all pretty good here. I did use some sandpaper to do some sanding, especially in this little mounted piece right here. So let me show you how to put it all together here. You're going to just clip it on there. Make sure you're not covering these buttons. Okay, and then I've got a, a fidget spinner. This one's got a little bearing in the center. It's about seven eighths of an inch wide, or you could say the diameter is seven eighths of an inch. And we're going to just drive it in there. Okay. A little bit more to the left. There we go. I think that looks good. And then we're going to get this little part put right here. And that little knobby end goes right in the center of the thumbstick. I'm going to attach this right here, that part of the controller, and it should stay on pretty well. And then the 
steering wheel just needs to be put in there just so. Let's turn a little bit. Yeah, just make sure it's on firmly. There, looking good. All right, so this is actually my second one for the Xbox One. This is my first one right here. This one actually snaps back into center position a lot of the time. This one, I've kind of got these uh, set so that it's a little bit more, I guess you could say it's not as um, loose. All right, so that means it's not recentering. And there's a reason behind that, which I'm going to explain a little later on in the video. But you could always uh, sand a little extra and get it to recenter if you'd like it to do that. You know, a normal steering wheel does recenter. Um, this one, you're just going to have to position it where you want it with those thumbs. All right. Hopefully that all makes sense. Looking forward to playing some games. All right, we got four to six up, let's play. All right, so as you can see, I'm getting pretty good control with the Xbox One controller. And if you wanna use um, manual gear shifting, you can just use these buttons up top here, The uh, R1 and L1. Obviously you want to do gas and brake with the index fingers and then shift gears with the index fingers um, while steering. Now if you're going to do an e-brake, emergency brake, you probably want to uh, do it on A, but that means you're going to have to take your finger off this side of the wheel, which might destabilize you a little bit. Is it a big deal? Well, if you're in a game where you're going to be constantly hitting the e-brake, yeah, it, could, it might not be ideal. But if it's a once in a while thing, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, they do make back buttons for the Xbox One controller. Of course, uh, if you buy that, um, you're going to spend a lot of money because that's basically the Xbox One Elite controller. But if you want to spend less money, you can buy a corded device that um, is the Dominator, and I have that. And I'm going to show you an image of me connecting that with my Xbox One controller. As you can see here, it's really not a very difficult process. And it, it does uh, fit with this steering wheel attachment, but you do have to make a little bit of a uh, concession in that you're going to have to do some sanding on one little spot in the, uh, in the device. So I'm showing that here. I've got Dirt Rally on my PlayStation 4. Let's give this a go. I got the uh, gear up on R1 and the gear down on R2. Obviously, the gas and brake are on the triggers. So using the steering wheel device on the PlayStation 4 is uh, working quite well. And again, you want to put that e-brake on X and then for um, gear shifting, obviously you're up here and gas and brake, you're up here on the shoulder buttons of the controller or triggers. Um, this controller, if you, let's say, try to connect something like the Dominator to it, it just doesn't fit. So um, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, they do make back buttons for the DualShock 4. Sony actually makes them, but unfortunately, as of this point, you can't get them here in the States. I don't know, maybe by a couple months from now, they'll be released again. I think they were released for a very short period of time in January, and then uh, things changed in the world market, and so now you can't get them for anything under $120. But once you get that attachment, I think you'll be able to have some back buttons on the controller, which uh, might make controlling things like e-braking or in games like Wipeout, uh, you could use that for um, weapon selection or uh, 
you know, switching weapons and things like that. So, all right. So, yeah, let's move on. We're going to talk a little bit about the games that you would play that are classic games on your PS4 as well as Xbox One on the Atari Flashback Discs, Volume 1, 2, and 3. Well, all right, we've got our PlayStation 4 on with Atari Flashback Classics Volume 2. This is a, uh, a compilation disc of classic games. Now, one thing you want to look for if you're going to use this steering wheel attachment to play some of these games, you want to look for the games that let you go left and right. A game like Asteroids, for instance, you can go left and right. And if you're going to play Asteroids, since you can't press up to go thrusting forward, you have to reassign thrusting to maybe one of the shoulder buttons. I reassigned mine to R1. And then I did R2 as, uh, or actually R1 is firing, R2 is thrusting, and then L1 is the hyperspace, okay? And you're going to do the same for Gravatar, which is a similar type of game. Um, are these fantastic? Well, you know, with Asteroids, you do get a little bit of a dead zone since it's a digital game. It's not really an analog programmed game, at least here on the uh, Flashback Classics it's not. Gravatar is also digital. In fact, it seemed a little more of a dead zone issue. So anyway, just letting you know, those aren't ideal, but they'll work. Super Breakout, on the other hand, is actually really nice. This game has true analog, so let's give her a, give her a shot. So as you can see, I'm getting really nice control. I'm going to move on. We'll show you another game that's in the uh, compilation. One of those Atari 2600 games. Uh, yeah, Asteroids. This is pretty good. It is digital. You get a little bit of that dead zone issue when you're moving the, the wheel. Um, another game that I've tried is Breakout. This again, just like the other Breakout, is really nice. It's got that true analog paddle um, control. Demons to Diamonds is in the same category as a paddle game. And I've also enjoyed Night Driver quite a bit. This game is pretty much an ideal game because it is designed for a paddle. And let's give it a shot. Let's bring it back to the console. And we'll reset the game. And let's make sure left difficulty is not on A. It is not. All right, here we go. And I've got the accelerator as the right trigger. So here we go. As a kid, I could tear up this game, even the tough parts of the track I could with that Atari paddle. I'm playing on Pro, so I'm trying not to give you a seizure, but I think I'm maybe going to give you a couple seizures. Yeah. All right. Now, what would be ideal would be to have an actual Atari paddle top to attach to this. And so in a minute or two, I'm going to show you a method that I utilized to attach a paddle top to this. And when we move on to some of the other games, you'll see that in action. All right, let's get back. I want to show you a couple other games on this uh, PlayStation 4 uh, compilation. All right, another left to right game is off the wall. Again, it's digital. It does have a dead zone. It's actually pretty noticeable. I thought race might work because it's a run around the track kind of game. I thought, well, you just steer left and right, correct? With the thumbstick going left and right. Not exactly. The way they got it programmed is you point the thumbstick in the direction you want the car to go. That's not going to work with this, unfortunately. So I was a little disappointed about that. All right, and the last little set, Space War, it's like Asteroids. This one is a digital game. It does have a minor dead zone, but actually not bad on this compilation. It worked out really well. Super Breakout's gonna be phenomenal. Street Racer, actually a pretty phenomenal game. And I wanna show you something about this. I'm gonna go back to the console and change to skiing. Let's try skiing. All right, let's give it a shot. This game is from the Stone Age days of the 2600. 
Uh, very archaic graphics, but fine analog control, I must say. Ah, until I wreck. Okay, here we go. Boom, and bang, and slow down a little bit. Ah. I wish I had some brakes. All right, so you get the idea. We're going to move on to the Xbox One, and we'll play some of those uh, Atari Flashback Volume 1 games. All right, we've got our Xbox One fired up with Atari Flashback Classics Volume 1. I've tried both of these with this. This one, as you recall, was the one that I made to not self-center, whereas this one has the self-centering. And one thing I found out, let's say on the game Fatal Run, which is an Atari 2600 game, you kind of want it to recenter. And so I prefer the recentering one for that game. There's also a game in here um, that's in the arcade hits part called Tempest. That one you want to have recentering as well, for sure. So, all right, let's go ahead and play some Fatal Run and I'll show you what the game looks like here. This 2600 game is one of the more advanced um, 3D perspective games that are has to do with racing. I'd say it's on par with uh, you know games like Enduro as far as how it looks. Looks like we've had a rough day at the track. I've got the accelerator on the trigger, which is kind of con convenient, and then I can fire on this. There we go. Got him. Get out of there. Got him. Anyway, you get the idea. The game goes on and on. You're on a big trip. All right, let's go back to try another uh, paddle game. That'll be a lot of fun, I believe. So let's go ahead and try Warlords. And we will. I'm the guy in the blue down there protecting my castle. Ah. I'm getting very good analog with this. It's very accurate. The placement is good as I can expect. Ah. Now in the 2600 compilation area, there is a Warlords, but that is a two player or more game. So this enables you to do one player. The 2600 version, not so much. Oh, I gotta protect that. That was close. Ah! <laughs> I have never been that good at this game. All right, we'll go back to take a look at Tempest just for the fun of it all. And again, you do kind of want that recentering feature, so let's play it. really would like a paddle for this. So let's put this on pause and I'm gonna go, I'll show you how to get that paddle installed. All right, here I have a paddle that's uh, seen better days. 
and it just popped the lid off. Now normally there's a piece of metal that'll fly off when you take it off, but in this case, um, no metal because I've already taken it off once. All right. That would be our objective is to connect this and get it connected so that it stays put. All right, so I have an idea here. My idea is to buy or have you buy a one and a half inch rubber stopper. Okay, and these I bought it. I bought this at Lowe's. It has kind of like an indented underside. Uh, you have to remove that part right there. So I've got a knife. I'm going to go ahead and try to remove it. It shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, there I took it off. Now you also need to drill a hole right down the center, so let's do that. I use my black electrical tape to uh, prevent it from uh, moving around too much and I don't want to damage my table. I think I'm coming down straight through the center here. Okay, success. Now the thing is, once you've got the, the hole, it's not big enough. So I think that's the right size, and what's blocking us now are these four little um, ridges. So we're going to have to cut down into this, like this, and then also 90 degrees away. There we go. Okay. Okay. So I had marked that. And then we just drill straight down through this material. There we go. Got the holes. Screws are number six, size three quarter inch. And we've got um, flat head screws. So I'll just go ahead and start working on drilling that straight through this rubber stopper. Kind of partially through. All right, so these will go through these two holes that are right here. Just make sure your lines are correct. Don't have to go all the way down, but definitely need to. Take a look at the underside here. We do see the screws coming through. Yeah, it's definitely secured onto that. And then you take your Atari paddle and hopefully everything's gonna be okay here in a moment. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go deeper down. Let's see if I went too far. Yeah, it doesn't look like I did. It's going to be fine. Okay, I'll check that as well. Not, not hitting anything, fortunately. Barely hitting that joystick with that metal. Yeah, barely. All right, here we go. So instead of making tiny slits, I ended up um, doing this some more on both uh, axes. <clears throat> and after I did that, I removed the tiny pieces of rubber from those four zones. And that enabled the paddle um, to actually have the proper amount of grooves so it could be fit onto the paddle pretty close. 
There we go. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, got the paddle on. All right. And these little screws uh, don't seem to be getting in the way of anything underside on the underside. So it's easily removed, but while it's here, yeah, it, uh, it does hold pretty well. I'm thinking I may want to put some hot glue here and here and then apply it and then put this, pop this back into the position it's supposed to be in. And then, then it may not wobble that mount anymore. It might be a little bit more stable. But uh, yeah, it's, it's in there and it's working well. Interesting looking. Now, I also bought this, which is a uh, cult plastic rear lens cap for a Minolta camera. And looks like we have a cat who wants to see what I'm doing. All right, so if you take this, you'll see this doesn't have that going on on the underside. I have a one and five eighths inch rubber stopper a little bit bigger than the one and a half inch rubber stopper we were using before. So again, if you cut down into it, remove that, uh, that little knobby thing. There we go. It's pretty good. Okay, success then this would be driven down into this cap. And again, it fits. And again, you could drill those two uh, screw holes just like you did for this one. And it's about this, it's actually pretty close to the same size, but it's a little shorter. And being shorter might actually give it a little better center of gravity, uh, possibly. So all I'm saying is if you don't want to waste a classic game tool and you'd rather use a lens cap, uh, from a defunct camera, I think that's one way you could definitely go. I managed to find this for 50 cents at a thrift store. I have looked online and spotted uh, that there are some, maybe not this particular model, but they look awful close uh, to this type cap. So it's got an M on it and it's even got a little arrow pointing up and uh, little ridges on the side, just like the 2600 um, uh, paddle cap does. So anyway, this would work the same way and uh, I might even be better. All right, let's bring it over to the Xbox One and see how it goes. Okay, we're back and we're going to use the paddle. I'm going to basically fire with, uh, maybe I'll use this fire button while I use the right hand to do the back and forth on the paddle in the game. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> slow, fast. It's got full analog capability, which is nice. It's working pretty nice. I'm gonna to have to try a couple other games with this as well. I like the feel of the paddle, it's very familiar. It's actually kind of awesome. All right, I'm gonna try a different game. I'll go down to the main menu and we'll try, let's go across over to here. Oh, I know what we're gonna do, Circus Atari, right? I have never been that good at this game, oh, as you can see.
cards. What a game. So a couple others that are on here. Let me just bring you back to the main menu. Pong Sports, vertical movements. This only does horizontal. Doesn't work on Pong, Pong Sports, unfortunately. And let's see here. I don't think it works on a whole lot of these. Let's see. It'll work on Warlords. It'll work on Tempest. Tempest isn't really that fun, unfortunately. So yeah, on this compilation, uh, yeah, you're gonna be playing a lot of Circus Atari, and you're gonna be playing a lot of Tempest, and a lot of Warlords, and I think that's basically it for this compilation. And the Flashback Classics Volume 3, there should be a few games to play as well in that. I don't actually have that, so eventually one of these days, maybe I'll break down and get it, and I'll show you some of the games in that as well. Now, another thing. These and PlayStation 4 controllers can be made to work on, let's say, the Atari 2600. And if you add this attachment, you can play digital games. And there are a number of digital games that would go well, left and right games that you can try on your 2600 with these controllers. Now, the secret was found a few episodes back in Wired Up Retro, and that is to use an Atlatan Seagull 78 uh, controller adapter. If you plug that into your 2600, and then plug an additional adapter known as the 8-bit uh, Do Retro Receiver, that's the Sega version. Basically, that enables these uh, Bluetooth PS4 and Xbox One controllers to work on your Atari 2600 or Genesis or other consoles. So just letting you know, that is an available option for those of you who want to check into that. Um, it's, it's a real treat to use these controllers to play Atari 2600 games, in my opinion. Um, some people, though, though, like only the genuine article, and I can understand that. All right, so, wow, I'm exhausted. This was a pretty big episode. I told my wife um, not long ago, I think this one's going to be kind of a simple episode. I, I'm just putting together a steering wheel, doing a couple things, playing some games. This should just take a few minutes. <laughs> well, or hours or days. But anyway, here I am, three weeks after my last video. I'm, I'm really glad I got the chance to share this with you guys. And I'm sure some of you classic gamers are going to be pretty psyched to know about this. And you know, some of you racing game fans, I'm hopeful, have enjoyed the episode as well, getting these uh, neat little... Uh, devices working it has been a real treat for me I, I love racing games I love classic games this is just right up my alley all right so I think that's about it I'm, I'm really glad you guys uh, got to spend some time with me uh, doing all this and if you would like to leave me a thumb up I'd greatly appreciate that uh, subscribe if you haven't uh, I definitely have a lot of interesting videos um, on my YouTube channel it's definitely a, a one-of-a-kind YouTube channel and we'll look forward to uh, seeing you next time. And uh, I hope you guys are having a lot of fun out there uh, with your free time. I know I have, I've had a little bit of free time lately, and that's soon to hopefully come to an end when I get back to work uh, this coming June. So, all right. Well, I guess that's about it. I will talk to you guys later. You have a good one. Take care.